the people who are Christians, who are named after Christ, who, who, are, who are professing Christians. They are not practicing Christians. Hallelujah. By which, if they were only being there in the time, in the days of Jesus on the earth, definitely you would have called. They would have given them a name. Hallelujah. Yes, you kissed it right. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Jesus, when he was on this earth, he loved the sinners so much, but he hated sin. He's a lover of sinner, but hater of sin. So he doesn't. He never wanted uh, the sinner to continue in sin, but he wanted always the sinner to come out of sin. But the very dangerous sin that you had always provoked Jesus when he was on this earth. Uh, what was it? Who was it? Sinner who provoked him to anger. Yes, but they never thought they were sinners. Pharisees and Sadducees, they provoked Jesus to anger, not the sinners. So, and he always called them hypocrites. Most of the people, like you know, whether they like it or not, whether they know it or not, you know, it's a very dangerous, subtle deception of the enemy. That, uh, we have to be watchful also over our lives. And the Lord gave, I was so thrilled to share the message. Then after that it was like 1.30 in the morning, uh, in the midnight. Then I said, it's good that I share it. Let me also pray over myself first. Subtle, subtle spirit. Hypocritical spirit. Very dangerous spirit. So we are going to deal with that today. Mark's Gospel chapter 7 and verse 6, please read. Mark's Gospel chapter 7 and verse 6. He answered and said to them, Yeah, he answered and said to them, Well, 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 did I say a prophecy of you, hypocrites, hypocrites, as it is written, as it, as it is written, this people, this people, honors me, honors me, with their lips, with their lips, but their heart, but their heart, is far from me, is far from me. Hallelujah. Here the Lord says, Where well, did Isaiah prophesy about you, hypocrites? Where did he say that Isaiah 29 and Isaiah? 29. 13, 13, yeah. Therefore the Lord said, yeah, Isaiah 29, 13, yeah. Therefore the Lord said, Therefore the Lord said, In as much as these people, In as much as these people, Draw near with their mouths, Draw near with their mouths, And honor me with their lips, And honor me with their lips, But have removed their hearts far from me, But have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of men. Yes, is taught by the commandment of men. Hallelujah. That is out of compulsion. Oh hallelujah. It is not real. The Lord says, therefore the Lord said, as much as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips but have removed their hearts far from me. He says, in Matthew's Gospel chapter 15 also, verse 4, verse 8, verse 7 and 8. Yeah. Hypocrites, Hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, yeah, saying, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, saying, these people draw near to me. These people draw near to me. With their mouth. With their mouth. And honor me with their lips. Honor me with their lips. But their heart. But their heart. Is far from me. Is far from me. And Hallelujah. The Lord says, what's the first thing we are going to see? Who's an hypocrite? The Lord says, these people draw near to me with their mouth. And honor me also. With their lips. But their heart is not with me. Hallelujah. Our heart should go along with Jesus. Our heart should 
walk along with Jesus, our heart should move along with Jesus. Hallelujah. They say it's only mouth service. Lip service. Hallelujah. That means only mouth and in speaking. Lord, we praise you. You are a good God and all that. But either their heart is empty or it is filled with something else other than God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise be to God. That's why the Lord says, many people think like, you know, we take this so lightly. We call upon the Lord and we say, oh, I just did said my prayers. Oh, I just sang for the Lord. Oh, I did this and uh, I, I shared the gospel. Everything should be from the heart. The prayer should be from the heart. The singing, praising should be from the heart. And, you know, sharing should be from the heart. Hallelujah. If it is not from the heart, then the heart is filled with somebody else, something else, and only lip service we give to God. Which God abhors. Such people God calls them hypocrites. They draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Either the heart may be loaded with, according to that same Mark's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 21, the word of God says, please read, Mark's Gospel, chapter 21. Far from within, far from within, out of the heart of men, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, adulteries, fornications, fornications, murders, murders, thefts, thefts, covetousness, covetousness, wickedness, wickedness, deceit, deceit, lewdness, lewdness, an evil eye, an evil eye, blasphemy, blasphemy, pride, pride, foolishness, foolishness. All these evil things, all of these evil things, come from within, come from within, and defile a man, and defile a man. Hallelujah. Out of the heart of the man. Proceed what? Evil thoughts. Hallelujah. They may not, uh, you know, harm anybody physically, that they may intend evil. Out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders. Tips, covetousness, evil eye, jealous eye, pride, foolishness, and so on. All these things come from within and defile and man. If all these things are there, then how do you say that we can, you know, worship the Lord in truth, in faithfulness? These things will definitely hold on to us and will not allow us to seek God genuinely. One person cannot live with all these things and say, O oh Lord my God. Hallelujah. That's why God called David a man after my own heart. David was so close to God's heart because we know he had so many shortcomings in his life yet he was a person always trying to keep his heart right with God. Hallelujah! When he, uh, you know, in Psalm 51 also, verse 10, he cries out to God saying that, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit in me. Hallelujah. That's why he was a worshipper. That's why God was so much pleased in his worship. Praise and worship. Today people praise and worship. Hallelujah. That is again a lip service if they are not going to do it from this right. Hallelujah. Sanctified heart. 
So, he says, create in me. That means he says, yes, Lord. It's been spoiled. I've committed sin against you. He confesses his sin boldly, publicly. Hallelujah. He did not hide it. Everybody will say, oh, David committed adultery. David committed sin. But he publicly confessed it and said, Lord, I have sinned only against you, against you. I have done this, he says. And he says he's pleading, begging for a new, brand new heart once again, for a, for a chance. Hallelujah. And he says, cast me not away from your presence, Lord, and take not your Holy Spirit from me, God. So he cries out, he's asking for a clean heart and the right spirit. And towards the end of the psalm, you know, he says, like, I will definitely declare about your goodness to others, O oh God. Amen. And also Psalm 139, the last verses. Oh, hallelujah. Please read it. Search me, O oh God, David says, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Now he is going deeper here. He says, Lord, I'm not going to trust me anymore. I'm not going to trust my heart any longer. Lord, already my heart has failed me. Hallelujah. I'm not going to trust my heart. It seems to be okay. It seems to be good. But I want you to search my heart to know me, whether I'm the right person, good person. So self-analysis, self self uh, I want to say, searching, like you know, himself. Because the spirit of man is a lamp given by God to man to search within himself, to know what is there in him. So he says, search me, O God, and know my heart. And he says, my thoughts, okay, I'm fine. In my eyes, I'm frank, I, I seem to be okay. But when I am tried, when I am tested, when I am tempted, hallelujah, then you know who I am. Hallelujah. So try me, Lord, and know my thoughts. So he's going that, to that text and saying that I want to be tried and tested and known by God. Hallelujah. Every Christian, every child of God, outwardly, normally speaking, they are none but angels. <laughs> but when they are tried, tested, tempted, and in that they remain faithful to God. Hallelujah. And that is the right kind of heart. Uh, that, in that situation when they seek God, David did that. Once he got hurt, and he says, create in me a clean heart. Now he says, Lord, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. I don't want to be a hypocrite. Hallelujah. So, I'm not going to just, you know, put my trust in myself, my good deeds, my goodness. But I want to put my trust in you. So he says, search me, O God, and know my heart, try me and know my thoughts, see if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So his heart is directing his heart towards the way everlasting. Hallelujah. Though he was a king, he was not seeking the earthly ways. He was seeking the everlasting ways. Hallelujah. That's the genuine child of God. A child of God means he will seek the things of above. Where the treasure is there, the heart also will be. If our treasure is our Lord Jesus Christ, our heart also will be there where he is. Amen. Hallelujah. Some people, their treasure will be, oh, so this and that and this person and that person, their heart will be always behind those things and all that they call upon God is lip service. 
So the Lord said, these people draw near to me with their mouth and, you know, honor me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. So such people, Jesus calls them hypocrite. Let us not be like that. Let us not always take our heart so easily. The word of God says, the most deceitful one is our own heart. Never to trust it. So always keep guard over your heart. Uh, Proverbs 4, the Lord, word of God says, uh, oh, what is it? Guard your heart with all diligence, out of which springs the issues of springs life. Springs the issues of life. If you guard your heart with all diligence, with all you know integrity, with all watchfulness, you know something will happen. What will, what will happen? Out of which springs of issues, issues of life. life, life. Hallelujah. Springs of issues of life, life eternal, will flow. So your heart, how much you have to keep calm over it. If you only are slack, it may go to the left or the right or away from God within a moment's time and get to fight. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. Because such is the world that we are living in, filled with all kinds of spirits. But your heart should be straight before God. Even in that same Proverbs, the author says like that. <coughs> Please read mm. verse 27. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Do not turn to the right, right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Remove your foot from the evil. <coughs> Hallelujah. So keep your heart with all diligence. Verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence. Yeah. For out of it spring the issues of life. Amen. So we have to do that in Jeremiah 17 and then we know what the heart is written. In Genesis chapter 6 we know. God saw that the very intent of the thought of the heart of man was continually evil. It's not the heart, I always used to say, I mean mentioned in many of the messages, it's the thought of the heart, it's not the thought of the heart alone, but the intent of the thought of the heart God sees. And the whole world was corrupt, their hearts were corrupt, time of Noah, so God destroyed the whole world and, you know, except Noah and his family. But now, through Jesus Christ, we have hope that we need not be destroyed, the world need not be destroyed, the evil works can be destroyed. Hallelujah! Because uh, 1 John 3, 8 says, The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Because he who sins is of the devil, and the devil sins from the beginning. So the works of the devil is sin. Jesus, the Son of God, was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. So team up with him, the Son of God, and destroy the works of the devil in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Through the blood of Jesus. Through the righteousness of Jesus. Hallelujah. Or to the, to the death, death, death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Satan should have no room in your life, in any area of your life. Bring, take Jesus to that area. Hallelujah. Deal with that area severely, seriously. Or pull the strongholds down. Thrash them down. Cast them out of you. Say, I don't want you any longer here in my life. Get out. I belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. So like that, you have to keep your heart right before God. Then you worship Him. The Lord says, those who worship Him will worship me in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. So the first thing is that, Secondly, who's the hypocrite? The Lord says, Matthew's Gospel, verse chapter 7 and verse 5. Please read. Yeah, Matthew 7, 5. Please read it again. 
Hypocrite. Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye. First remove the plank from your own eye. And then. And then. You will see clearly. You will see clearly. To remove the speck from your brother's eye. To remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not. Enough. Enough. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Lord says, I was wondering what is the Lord trying to say? Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Verse 3. Oh, hallelujah. Because the Lord says, verse 1, Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Why do you look at the speck of your speck in your brother's eye but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say that to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye? Then he says, hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Hallelujah! Who's an hypocrite? People who judge others quickly, pass on judgments on others. We have to be very careful about it. The Lord says, you have a plank in your eye. Your brother has a speck in your eye, in his eye. But you are trying to condemn the other person. Judge not that you be not judged. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. Many people it's right, right, it's easy to find fault with others. We are no permit to judge others. Hallelujah. In the eyes of God, we are no one to judge others. Since you have plan, that means he has a speck. That means it's just a small thing. That speck, you have allowed it to grow. You have not cleansed, you have not, you know, washed it, you have not removed it from your eye, that speck when it was there in your eye. You continued with that, you didn't attend to your, you know, uh, shortcomings, you didn't attend to your, uh, what to say, insufficiency in the Lord. You have not attended to your mistakes, problems, you have not corrected yourself, you have not you know, done anything to clear yourself and it has become a plank. The speck, you didn't attend to it, it has grown big. But now you are just seeing the speck in the eyes of your brother and condemning somebody. Other people never do that. Oh, hallelujah. If you only keep, if you are a person, Listen carefully, the same thing, even the worldly, worldly saying says, you know, if you point out your finger at a person, remember that all other three fingers point at you. Hallelujah! So, we are nobody to judge others. But, uh, you know, when you really attend to yourself, keep sanctifying, cleansing yourself, oh, hallelujah, the more the speck is removed out of you, the more your eyes will see clearly, like Jesus. Hallelujah! Jesus saw the sinners with compassion. He was moved with compassion. Hallelujah! He was, he, he dined with the sinners. But he couldn't get along with the religious people. So this uh, many times, you know, uh, very subtle. When we come to know the Lord, either people become, you know, uh, religious, now they don't come at all, they go backslidden. Both are dangerous. We have to be spiritual. Hallelujah. Form of godliness, <coughs> form of religiosity, God abhors. God wants people to understand Him, understand His mind, spirit. 
So the secret is if you want, if you are not going to see the genuine child of God, will not quickly, you know, come into conclusion. So we will we'll not be very, you know, rash in passing on judgments. We will have to be careful about people, but at the same time, passing on judgment is not in our hands. Hallelujah! We have to give it over to God. So he says, let me remove the plan from your eyes. So when we keep analyzing ourselves in the Lord, we will not be judging others. We will not be, because that's the job of Satan. If you read in Revelation chapter 12, the word of God says, he is the accuser of the brethren. He always goes and goes to the presence of God, accuses the uh, yeah, chapter 12 and the latter part of verse 10. Revelation 12, latter part of 10. Accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God, day and night, has been cast down. The accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God, day and night, day and night always grumbling and murmuring, you know, or complaining about others, finding fault with others. Hallelujah! At least if you're not outwardly, you know, counsel people, even in family matters or any... Why are you always seeing the, you know, uh, shortcomings in the other person's life? Why don't you see? the good things and appreciate it and give thanks to God, give praises to God. Hallelujah! For all the good things. Hallelujah! You fail to see the good things. That's why the families are torn apart. Only the wrong side you keep seeing and complaining and passing on judgments. Apostle Paul quotes the same thing in Romans chapter 2. Because what happens, please read this, Romans chapter 2. In, uh, in addition, he is writing there, Apostle Paul, verse two, chapter 2 and verse 1, quickly read it. Therefore, Therefore you, are you are inexcusable, O man. Inexcusable, O man. Whoever you are who judge. Whoever you are who judge. For. For in whatever you judge, in whatever you judge, another, another, you condemn yourself. You condemn yourself. Hallelujah. So, for you who judge, please read verse four. Oh, oh, or do do you despise the riches of his goodness? Do you despise the riches of the goodness? Forbearance, forbearance, and long suffering, and long suffering, not knowing, not knowing that the goodness of God, goodness of God, leads you to repentance, leads you to repentance, but in accordance with your hardness, but in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent, impenitent heart. heart you are treasuring up for yourself. You are treasuring up for yourself. Wrath in the day of wrath. Wrath in the day of wrath. And revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Yeah, wrath in the day of wrath and revelation and the judgment of God. Hallelujah. The Lord with long suffering and forgiveness wants you, wants each and everyone to repent and remove the impenitent, the heart that is not willing to repent. Remove that such a heart and turn to God and seek mercies of God. Hallelujah. So, the third point, quickly we we'll go. Um, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5 and verse 37. Please read. Matthew's Gospel, 5, 37. But let your yes be yes. Let your yes be yes. And your no. And your no. 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 For whatever is more than these, for whatever is more than these, is from the evil one. Yes, is from the evil one. Hallelujah. He's again saying this to uh, the religious people, Pharisees and Sadducees. He's saying, whatever is yes, let it, let your yes be yes and no be no. Don't try to manipulate things or you know uh, show some something which is not. Don't try to adjust or manage or you know. 
Let your SBS know we know, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Because he's speaking about, hallelujah, swearing falsely. Verse 33 says, It was said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oath to the Lord. But I say to you, Do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem. That in detail we read in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 23. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God, praise the Lord. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Yeah, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. <laughs> Hypocrites. Hypocrites. First of all, we read, right? Mm. Woe to you, blind guides, mm. who say, mm. whoever swears by the temple, mm. it is nothing. Oh, they say, whoever swears by the temple, it's nothing but the gold, gold of the temple, he should not do that. And then he says, which is greater, gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold. Hallelujah. And then whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing. Whoever swears by the gift that is on the altar, he is obliged to perform it. The Lord says, fools and blind, which is greater gift of the altar. See the mind, blindness of the religious people. So only, hallelujah, again he says, he whoever swears by the altar, swears by it and by all things. So he who swears by the temple, swears by it and by him who dwells in it. So the Lord says, oh to you, don't do that. Let your S be S and no be no. Oh, I promise God said, God promised this promise. Don't do that. Let your S be S, no be no. Hallelujah. Beyond this, it is definitely from the evil one. Amen. If you're trying to please somebody and to try to, you know, hide something else and to say something else within you are something and without you are saying something, don't do that, the Lord says. Always keep silent. If you are not able to say the truth, ask the Lord for help, that's all. Let your S be S, no be no. Why should you please men? Why should you please others? Why should you, why for the fear of men, should you, you know, manipulate things and say something else? Don't do that. The Lord also says in Luke's Gospel chapter 12, He says over there, who, I'll show you whom you should fear. Do not fear men who can only kill the body and do nothing more. But I tell you, um, fear God who is able to kill your body and cast your soul into hell. Only God has the power to cast your soul into hell. So when you, hallelujah, glory to God, go against God and you know, if you don't have the fear of God and fear of men, see, if you lie to a person, because you fear that person, you are lying to that person. Right? But what is not there? Fear of God is not there. If you fear God, oh, you will say that, let me not do this. You will be straightforward, honest, or you will seek God's help to deal with that situation. So, because God has the authority, only He can, because the hell is meant for the devil. And how can He cast anybody into hell? So He causes people to err against God. And that, that's how He makes people to go to hell. So we have to be very careful. Let your S be S, no be no. Otherwise it is hypocritical. Amen. Matthew's Gospel 5.20. Please read. For I say to you, For I say to you, That unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes, Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes, the scribes and, Pharisees, and Pharisees, You will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. God says, unless your righteousness exceeds, our righteousness should exceed the righteousness of Pharisees, scribes and Pharisees. Otherwise, we cannot enter into the kingdom of God. What was the righteousness of 
the Sadducees, the Pharisees and scribes, and how should ours exceed? We are going to see that in a few verses. Here um, in the Old Testament he is quoting and New Testament God Jesus is giving another version of that word, of that, you know, law. Um, verse 21 here says, I will just show you quickly. Verse 21 he says, you shall not, you shall not murder. Whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. Jesus says, but I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Whoever says to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. Whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hellfire. This is righteousness, exceeding the righteousness of Pharisees. Hallelujah. And then again, oh hallelujah, glory to God. Verse 27. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. That is the righteousness of those religious people, they don't commit adultery. But 28, the Lord says, But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Hallelujah. This is the righteousness that should exceed the righteousness of religious people. They don't commit adultery. But I tell you how they are hypocrites. Here the Lord says, I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. When these religious people, uh, uh, in uh, John's Gospel chapter 8, we read, Hallelujah, glory to God. Scribes again, the scribes and Pharisees, verse 3. John's Gospel 8 and verse 3. Then the scribes and Pharisees. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman. Brought to him a woman. Caught in adultery. Caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst. Yeah, when they had set her in the in the midst. They said to him. They said to him. Teacher. Teacher. This woman was caught in adultery. This woman was caught in adultery. In the very act. In the very act. Now, now, Moses in the law. Moses in the law commanded us. Yeah, commanded us that that should be she, such person should be stoned. What do you say? They said this to test him and to accuse him. But Jesus stood down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. But I think Jesus was working in the conscience. Hallelujah! Of those people who are condemning this woman. So, Jesus was not trying to defend her or support her, but Jesus was trying to, oh hallelujah, convict those people who professing themselves as religious people. So, when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to him, he was without sin among you. Let him throw a stone at her first. Then again he started writing on the ground. Verse 9, Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. Hallelujah! Amen? Went out one by one. They were convicted by their conscience. That means, they have already committed adultery in their, in, their, in their heart. Hallelujah. See how Jesus judges those people. My God. So, that's why Jesus says, Everybody went away from the old to the last. And Jesus saw the woman also and then says, No one has condemned you? No. Then he says, Neither do I condemn, but go sin no more. Hallelujah. No, don't sin. Go sin no more. So that's how our righteousness should be, should exceed the righteousness of scribes and Pharisees. That means at heart, at heart. Not the physical, you know, even the Pharisee. Uh, in Luke's Gospel chapter 18, he was praying, Lord, I give tithes, I fast twice a week. Uh, twice a week and then um, I'm not like adulterer, fornicator, 
and I am not like that publican, oh Lord, he prays over there. But the publican, I always used to say, oh, beating up on his breast and crying out to God and saying that, uh, Lord, be merciful unto me a sinner. And the Lord says, this man went back home righteous. Like becoming a righteous person is a matter of seconds like that. If you only people repent truly and seek God's mercy and remain in God's righteousness. Hallelujah. Never live a Christian life, you know, uh, trusting your own righteousness, counting your own righteousness. Our righteous deeds, righteous life will not help us. The word of God instead says they are like filthy rags in the eyes of God. Never count on your righteousness. It's highly dangerous. It will fail you. Hallelujah. It is like the fig leaves that was, you know, Adam and Eve made for themselves. Hallelujah. As garment. It won't help. But the righteousness of God. We have all much other we are righteous. But we cannot depend, rely on that righteousness. Hallelujah. We have to, God is the only righteous person. God's righteousness only is perfect. So, how do we become righteous? By believing in the Lord. There are lots of things I can say, Romans 5.1 uh, and then Romans uh, 9, uh, 5, 9. We, we, we are redeemed, we are justified by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, He who thirsts and hunger for righteousness. Hallelujah. We have to have the thirst and hunger for the righteousness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus also taught, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and, and His righteousness. Seek the righteousness of God, not your own righteousness. Hallelujah. And through the righteousness, the righteous are bold like lions. Hallelujah. Hypocrites cannot be bold. Hallelujah. People who depend, I mean, trust, put their trust in their own righteousness cannot be bold. But people who are filled with the righteousness of God, they be bold like lions. Amen. And then next thing, uh, Isaiah chapter 33, that's what we are going to see. 33 and verse 14. Please read quickly. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Yeah, Isaiah 33, 14. The sinners are uh, sin, the sinners in Zion are afraid. Afraid. Fearfulness has seized the hypocrites. Fearfulness has seized the hypocrites. Hallelujah. See? It will fade away. You cannot pose yourself as somebody, religious person or you know, godly person or you know, believer or whatever. The word of God clearly says over here, uh, fear will, fearfulness, hmm, has, fearfulness seized has seized the hypocrites. The hypocrites. So, but verse 15, he who walks righteously and speaks uprightly, he who despises the gain of oppressions, who chesters with his hands, refusing bribes, who stops his ears from hearing of bloodshed and shuts his eyes from seeing evil, he will dwell on high. His, his place of defense will be the fortress of rocks. Bread will be given him, his water will be sure. Hallelujah. See the difference between the hypocrites and the righteous. So, fearfulness will cease hypocrites because they are not rooted in the Lord. Hallelujah. They are surface level. But people who are genuine, they have to be rooted deep in the Lord. You cannot, you know, it's like, you know, people who are enacting things, putting up makeup and after that, all the makeup gone, everything gone. Hallelujah. It should not be that way. 
portion, portion. It's it's how long can people can mostly like you know it's like uh, so that should not be the hypocrites. And then uh, verse twenty, chapter twenty three. Um, the Ezekiel 33 and 31, please. Ezekiel. 33 and 31. So, so, they come to you as people do. Uh, and they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people. They sit before you as my people. And they hear your words. And they hear your words. But they do not do them. But they do not do them. For. For. With their mouth they show much love. With their mouth they show much love. But their hearts pursue their own gain. Yeah, but their hearts pursue their own gain. Hallelujah. People come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people and they hear your words but they do not do them. Just hear us. We are hearing the word of God but don't do anything out of it. For with their mouth they show much love but their hearts pursue their own gain. Such people, people who just listen to the word of God, not taking any any strain or any effort to live according to the word of God. But they seek their own gain and live. They are hypocrites. They are not deceiving others, but they are deceiving themselves. Hallelujah. We have to be careful. Matthew's Gospel, I'll just show, tell you the things only. 23 verses 6 and 7, they are this hypocrite. They seek first place, importance, Everything, everywhere. And Jesus calls them, Hallelujah, hypocrites. But what is the teaching of our Lord Jesus? If anyone wants to be first, let him be last. If anyone wants to be a master, let him be a servant. Hallelujah. Oh, that time he cannot digest. Many people are not able to digest. It is contrary to worldly principle. Jesus touched. If you want to be first, be the last. If you want to be somebody, be nobody. Apostle Paul, when he was, he was a very reputed person, but when he, when he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, nobody taught him. But he himself says, oh God, before Jesus, I just cannot post about anything else in this world. So I have to count. I am going to count. Everything, whatever came to me, but lost. Hallelujah. To gain Christ, I'm going to do that. He's not compelling it or you know, enforcing it on others. He's just sharing his experience. Personal experience. So that's it. Uh, otherwise, you know, having and then this uh, hypocrites, this religious people, Pharisees, and Jesus healed sick persons. On the Sabbath day, they find fault with Jesus and Jesus rebukes them saying that don't you oh, rescue your animals, livestock, when it is fallen into a pit, how much more precious is the man? They have sympathy, soft corner for animals, but not for human beings. Hallelujah! They don't care about other human beings fellow human beings, their suffering, their pains, their heartaches, they don't realize self-centered, self-seeking. So these are hypocrites. So what is the end of these people, the word of, and also who's the hypocrite? Proverbs 11, 6. He destroys another person with his mouth is a hypocrite. By speaking and speaking and you know, spoiling other people's heart and mind. Destroying others' lives through his words is a hypocrite. So what is the end of these people? How do they? What happens to them? Please read quickly certain verses. I'll show you Job 13, 16, please read. And 27, 8, 8, 13. 
Job 13:16. There Job said, uh, uh, yeah, please read. He also shall be my salvation. Uh, Job 13, 16, 16. Okay. Uh, for uh, the pope right could not come before him. Hmm. Actually, 13-16 is it? Yeah. Hmm. He also shall be my salvation, mm. yeah. for a hypocrite could not yes, come yes. before him. Yes, yes. He also shall be my salvation, for a hypocrite yes, could not come, could not come before, him. before him. Hallelujah. A hypocrite cannot go before, go stand before God. Almighty. Hallelujah. Boldly he cannot go. Face God. And then Job 27, 8, 8, 13. Quickly. 27, 8. For, For what is the hope of the hypocrite? What is the hope of the hypocrite? Though he may gain much. Though he may gain much. If God takes away his life. Yeah. No hope for the hypocrite. How much ever he may make the gains. Hallelujah. There's no hope for him. 8.13. So are the paths of all who forget God. Mm, so are the paths of all who forget God. And the hope of the hypocrite shall perish. Yeah. The hope of the hypocrite shall perish. Hallelujah. Job 36.13. He heaps up wrath the word of God says. And then Matthew 24, 51. Hallelujah, glory to God. Please read. And will cut him into two. Yeah, the previous verse also we read. 48. 48. Matthew's gospel 24, 48. But if that evil servant says in his heart. If the evil servant says in his heart. My master is delaying his coming. My master is delaying his coming. And begins to beat his fellow servants. And begins to beat his fellow servants. And to eat and drink with the drunkards. And to eat and drink with drunkards. The masters of, master of that servant. The master of that servant. Will come on a day. Will come on a day. When he is not looking for him. When he is not looking for him, and at an hour, and at an hour that he is not aware of, that he is not aware of, and will cut him in two, yeah, and appoint him the portion, appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hypocrites will end up in the place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, most dangerous thing is to be a hypocrite. What happens? He says, my master, he's saying, I'll come, I'll come, but he's delaying his coming. And he eats, he, he, he beats his fellow servant and, and to eat and drink with the drunkards. Merry making, worldly ways, enjoying life, not bothered about, not getting himself prepared for the coming of his master. But the, when the master, he will come on a day when he is not looking for. And at an hour that he is not aware of. So how much we have to be always be ready. Be watchful. Be ready. We have to keep, you know, uh, encouraging one another. Saying that be watchful and pray always. Hallelujah. As the Lord has cautioned us in uh, Luke's Gospel 21 and 36. Please read and pick finish with that. Watch therefore, watch therefore, and pray always, and pray always. Let's write right, right at the left by the help of the Holy Spirit upon our hearts. Watch therefore, and pray always, that you may be counted worthy, that you may be counted worthy, to escape all these things, to escape all these things, that will come to pass, that will come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man. Yes, and to stand before the Son of Man. Oh, that you may be counted worthy to escape all the horrible things that are going to come upon this earth. Oh, to stand before the Son of Man. Walk therefore and pray always. Hallelujah. 
Shall we close our eyes and look to God in prayers? Hallelujah, glory to God. Mostly. Jesus has given all the saints, even the worldly people are ready, talking about the end of the world, knowing so many things. But God's people, Christians, are as usual, so cool. Even if we know the truth, we are not able to, you know, watch and pray always that you may be able to escape. It's not sufficient that one day prayer, watch and pray that you may be counted worthy to stand before the Son of Man. Oh, hallelujah. Watch. That means see what is happening in the world, in the sky, among people, among nations. Watch, therefore, and pray always that the day may not come upon you in unawares, that you may be able to escape all the calamities that are going to come upon this earth. Hallelujah. Watch and pray always. <laughs> 